Good morning, church. Uh, so glad to be here. Pastor Dave is out of town, and uh, he asked me if I would do a Devo for you guys today. So I'm so excited to be able to give the Devo. It's Monday, 9 a.m. Some of you are maybe rolling out of bed. You're in that quarantine still where you don't have to go into work. So lucky. Uh, but I'd love to be able to start off the day with uh, just a devotional on what it means to have unity amongst the believers. And I feel like we are in uh, such a crazy time right now. We have election like uh, less than a month away. And year 2020 has just been so crazy with uh, division, with uh, just so many things trying to uh, separate the believers and to divide us against one another. And when I was in college, I, I had this, you know, quote unquote fraternity. I went to a Christian college, so we couldn't call it a fraternity. So we called it social clubs. And I remember I had to memorize this Bible verse as part of uh, my initiation. And it was Psalm 133.1. And what it says is how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in unity. And, and the Passion Translation says it this way, how truly wonderful and delightful to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. Now, uh, this year, like I said, is kind of crazy. We have uh, elections less than a month away, and, and we've had uh, just so many things, like I said, trying to divide us. And what I want to talk about is what does unity look like within the believers, within the church. And the definition of unity is being together or at one with someone, the opposite of being divided. And and what I see within our circles and what I see within our, our church walls, our, our, our church family, is that if someone disagrees with something, then we uh, uh, separate from them. And, and I can understand uh, where there are some big issues, like being a Lions fan versus a Vikings fan. That is a big issue, and I still pray for all of you every day. But on a serious level, uh, I think that we need to get away from saying, because you believe uh, in this certain way about politics, or because you believe in this certain way about what is happening, I can't be with you. And we use the term, you know, oh, well, maybe if you uh, weren't a liberal, maybe you weren't a conservative, or maybe, you know, if you just understood this, then I could be your friend. Instead, we divide and we don't want to listen. And what the verse is saying here in Psalms 133 is that it is so beautiful in God's eyes when we, as the children of God, live together in unity. We don't let little things separate us. We may agree to disagree. But we don't let these little things get in the way and divide us and separate us. And unity is not saying you need to see the world as I do. That if you don't see exactly how, as I do, then I have to cut you out of my life. That if you don't agree with my stances, if you don't agree with my opinions, then you can't be my friend. I, I don't see that as unity. What I see unity looking like is asking questions. So you know what? I, I may not agree with this topic. Can you help me understand? I, I want to listen, in, and I think at times when people try to explain their opinions, we're already ready with that comeback in our mind. We're already uh, thinking of our response, and we listen to respond instead of listening to hear, and that causes division. And so, you know, my devos, I, I like to keep them short and sweet. And as we start to end this, when we think about unity amongst the believers, and we have uh, people that maybe think differently than us, can we try to listen? Can we try to open up our hearts and say, you know what, I've been raised a certain way, I, I've, I've come to think a certain way, and I'm pretty strongly about this, but can you tell me why you believe this? Or can you tell me why you stand on this topic? Or can you tell me why you disagree with me? I, I want to hear what you have to say and actually hear them. Actually open up your heart. What is maybe God trying to say to you through this person? And in Corinthians, it talks about how we as a church are a body, but we have many different members, many different organisms that work in their own way. And if we were to see something, if we were all eyes and we were to see something just as the eyes see it, I think that we wouldn't understand maybe what the nose sees. And I think of it like this, and maybe it's a stupid analogy. But uh, on the outside, a skunk looks very cuddly and pleasant. I'm an animal lover. And so to the eyes, I would love to be able to pick up a skunk and pet it and, and nurture it. But if I didn't have my nose, I wouldn't be able to sense that uh, maybe picking up a skunk isn't the best thing. And it takes my nose to be able to tell me uh, that maybe it doesn't, this isn't the best decision. 
And it's the same way within the church body. I think that we all look at things through the eyes and look at it through just, you know, uh, as Paul says in Corinthians, we were all, I would see it a certain way. And maybe someone else brings in a different opinion to show us that maybe we need to think this way. Or someone, uh, you know, like the hands or the feet, bring in a different opinion and say, hey, let's talk about this. Let, let's, let's wrestle with this. Let's see it through this viewpoint. You know, these are my experiences. And I think that's what unity looks like. To where we're able to say, you know what, I've been raised this way. I, I've been taught this way for so long. But this brother or sister in Christ has a different opinion. Let me listen to them. Let me talk to them. I'm not going to just shut them out because they're different. And I think that in this time, it is so crucial to live together in Unity Church. To be able to say, you know what, we're divided. Let's let's be one together. Let's hear what each other has to say. Let's wrestle with this in love and grace. And so that's my hope. That's my prayer. And, and we can disagree on, on maybe what I'm saying. But, man, I'd really challenge us to, in this time, not get divided, but to live in unity because... America needs it, the world needs it, and we can be an example of unity in such a dysfunctional world. So with that, I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, uh, just for your example of unity, just for uh, your desire, Lord God, for unity for the church. And I just pray that we will wrestle with some things, that we will be open-minded and open-hearted to the heart of your people, to the heart of you, God, to maybe we need to listen more and speak less. Lord God, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. So I just pray, Lord God, in our humility, that maybe we'll recognize that maybe we just need to be quiet every once in a while and listen. And that is hard because we, Lord God, we, we wrestle with wanting to uh, be right at times. So I just pray against that. And I pray against the attacks of the enemy that will try to divide the church, divide your sons and daughters. And Lord God, I'm just so thankful that we can wrestle with these topics so we can talk about unity. And just be with us in your holy and mighty name. Amen. God bless you, church.